Western Conference Podcast. Your boy, Big Body Cisco here. Brought to you by Dos Cotas Tequila. And I got in the building, Mr. 2005 NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year and the man they call Mr. Lights Out, Mr. Sean Merriman. How we doing, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? Man, it's good to have you here. Appreciate it. And the reason yeah. I say that is because I just had my cousin played on your team, Brandon Manu Maluna. Yeah. And I was just talking to him before I came up here. I said, hey, I'm about to have Sean on the show. He said, man, he goes, tell that dude. I said, what's up, man? Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen him in a while, man. I used to hate to see him in practice, dude. Yeah. Like, you know, because Big Brandon, dude, like he, like as big as he, he can yeah. run. Yeah. He can run. So, you know, obviously blocking and all that stuff, man. But he had feet like a smaller dude. Telling him, man. So he telling me his feet was he no, said his, his feet was impeccable. His feet, <laughs> his feet was he was pretty legit, man. He was legit. But how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Just grinding away. You look you're working on a lot of things. I heard about this. All these videos, if you guys don't know already on Sean's Instagram, every fight that I see things are viral, but you like sign them up. Yeah. Tell us about that, bro. So uh you know, obviously I don't like Tyler Extreme fighting. Yeah. And so, you know, now that's out there and people know I'm in the MMA and the combat yeah. sports uh space. And so, you know, I have a bunch of fighters from all over the country sending me DMs yeah. and like, hey, we, we, we're trying to get on the card. We're trying to get the lights out of extreme yeah. fighting. And so I say, okay, cool. Well, which promotion do you fall for last? And can you send me yeah. you some know, kind of something? Credibility. Right. Yeah. yeah. Send me something. And so what's kind of crazy is we, I, used, I would have really guys who, who can go, men, yeah. both men and women, who can flat out go. And I'll send them over to the, to the matchmakers and they book the fight and they get them on the yeah. card. I've had people send me videos of them getting knocked out. <laughs> them getting knocked getting out. Getting knocked out. <laughs> the complete opposite the of what The complete you... <laughs> opposite. And I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll DM them, I'll text them back and say, hey, did you, uh, you mean to send this? Or, <laughs> <laughs> was this on the B side of yeah, what you were yeah, supposed yeah. to send? Like, yeah. <laughs> did you mean to send that? So it started happening so often yeah. that um, that I was like, okay, hold on. S sign, I can sign this guy yeah. up or I can't, you know, men and women, I can sign him up or sign her up yeah. or not sign her up. And, you know, so I was like, hold on. Sign him up. Don't sign him up. Sign him up. And it became wow! It became a thing. It became a yeah. thing, and so you know, I, I, I'll see fights all yeah. all the time, and people say all the time, like, how do how do you get them? Like, everybody sends me this. <laughs> you don't got to look for nothing. I don't got to look for yeah. it. You know, it, it finds me. So yeah. uh, it, it's been cool. Um, obviously, you know, being in this space is is fun. It, yeah. It's a great. It's a, you know, MMA is just fun. Being around these fighters, absolutely. Coming from the locker room, from where I came from, to get a chance to be around these fighters yeah. again—that that is fun for me. But on the flip side of that, too, man, like we're on Fubo yeah. TV, so we we have, you know, national and international distribution. So I, I go back and I always kind of got to step back and look and yeah. say, man, we you know we're building something special. And so to kind of keep the f the fun part of of everything, yeah. social media wise, absolutely. But sign them up, but sign up, don't sign them up. It's fun. Yeah, I mean, with you having this whole, you know, doing, getting involved with that, with the transition between football and, and MMA, it's pretty much easy for you because it's still a contact sport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, <laughs> so you, I started. I mean, I started training a long time ago yeah. with a lot of guys, and even after I retired, I started to pick up more and more of my training because I wasn't worried about football yeah. anymore. So I was like, okay, cool. If guy going and, and something happened, I can. I got time to recover. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the biggest thing is I try to talk to a lot of these former athletes, and I say, dude, pick up some kind of combat sport. Come on. You know, you don't have to fight. You don't have to, you know, go all the way some with Some of them it. are fighting, though. Some of them are. Like, Frank Gore looked good. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell was fighting Le a few Le games. Le'Veon Le looked really good. You know, people talk a lot of mess about Greg Hardy, but Greg Hardy early on especially yeah. looked really good for somebody who didn't have the experience. Come on, man. Um, and so Heavyweight I, right there. Big, big boy. And so what I try to do is I try to, you know, talk to a lot of these guys. Like, hey, just pick it up, man, yeah. because when you're done – you got that year where you're like, uh, yeah. you know, what yeah. do I do? That limbo year. That, that limbo yeah. year where you you just overthinking a lot of things. And I think that, you know, just the the discipline of the sport has has helped me to maintain yeah. everything. And to be in this space as well, too. I mean, it's something that you're a fan of before you even got into the business, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I started, I mean, I was going to the UFC fights back in 2005. Yeah. You know, before it became mainstream. Yeah, before it was big. Before it was big. And I was there. Um, and, you know, for me, just the, the opportunity of being involved in a global sport. Yeah. Football is going to be king here Come on. in this country, always. Yeah. And nobody's ever going to overtake that. And it's starting to grow into the country. Yeah. But one thing people love, no matter what, they love fighting. And the physicality and of the whole thing. the physicality of it. And so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of correlations, man. Even though it's a different sport, it's a different thing, whatever. But the mentality yeah. of you being able to put your body in the line, it, it is very, very similar. And it's like it's just you. I mean, you know, on football you got you got your team. Right. Over here it's kind of like you dependent on you. It's you on you. You know, you you get the training, the everything you put into it is what you get about it. Hey, when that when that cage closed, <laughs> <laughs> when that door shut behind you, look. <laughs> in football, you get tired of something, you could jog off, tap your head. Exactly. You know, somebody coming get, in for you. Get there a substitution. Oh no, you tap your head. Yeah. They they're gonna put something on top of it. Exactly. Fix, right. And I think that um I, I think that 
the, the mentality between the two yeah. is so similar. You know, when I go and I'm, and I'm training with some of these fighters and some of these other guys that, you know, on the football side yeah. I train with. And, and tell me about that. You training with these fighters. You look like you could get in the ring too, Sean. Like, I, I'm just saying, if you were to get in the ring, who would you want to fight? I would, you know, my mentality is I would fight anybody. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Come I, on. I, that's I, the answer right there. Yeah, look, <laughs> I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be yeah, with everybody, yeah. but I would. Absolutely. Um, but I think, too, it, it's important to know because you don't want to disrespect the sport. Come right? on. I do it enough to stay in shape. Yeah. You know, I go to the gym and guys that see me on the side, I'm either doing some light sparring, mm-hmm. hitting the mitts, doing, I do yeah. it to stay in shape. Uh, I like the energy that's in there, too. Come on. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing uh, for me is that you either – like you can play basketball, you can play football, yeah. you can't play fighting. And so when, when people get in there and, they're, and they're not prepared, especially former Man. athletes now, you can't just jump in there because you were successful somewhere else. And you feel that like you was athletic enough to do that. Yeah. It's a whole different game It's a whole different, game it's a, it's a whole, it's a whole different, whole different beast. Yeah. And so for me, like I'll, I'll go grapple some days. I'll go you know, hit the mids. I'll go sp- do some light sparring. And, you know, sometimes when, when a couple of punches slip, the momentum changes a little bit. <laughs> hold up, hold up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depending, you know, depending on, you know, who you're training with. If you're yeah. training with somebody that's really good, it's, you know, a couple of punches slip, you, you're good. Yeah. Right? It's no, 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 you know, it's not going to turn up in there. But I think that uh, just being able to stay around the sport, man, has, has helped me a lot. And the lights out moniker, like that transition to the MMA is like, come on, you couldn't write a better script for that. Yeah, and they weren't supporting in football no yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> because now it's like taboo to have like people get people's lights out yeah. in the league. And, and then you know the thing is too, um, I, I, I looked at lights out. I always have, right? Yeah. I, but it had to be a face. It had to be somebody, which is me, to start it off yeah. and give it a platform, give it some, get, get, put a little something, a brand behind yeah. it to get it out there, man. But I always thought that the lights out was a lot bigger than just fighting or football yeah. or anything else, man. It's it's like a lifestyle, dude. Like when you have, you know, people that's just going out doing big things and accomplishments and like that dude lights yeah. out or he on fire. Even in business and everything that you talk about, lights out is Every, synonymous with everything. Everything, yeah. man. And I and I always looked at it being a lot bigger than than whatever I did on the football field and in the cage because now you know, it's kind of resonating across the board in many things, especially when you start talking about apparels being yeah. added and all this other stuff. Like, it's just taking, like, a, a turn of its of its own. And you made a business out of it because, I mean, we talk about early young days. Like, when Lights Out, you have that nickname. You have that Lights Out in, in the pen, you somebody. You right. know? <laughs> but then you kind of, like, slowly, you see the transition of you going from Maryland, going to, you know, your NFL career, and having that Lights Out turn into a business, which is what we're seeing now. Yeah, and, and the, the, to be honest, I've always been like that. Yeah. You know, even, um, and so... Do you remember back in the day with those uh, the fifty cent G unit tank tops? Oh come on, absolutely. Out, well, you, you could wear those, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I had them too. Yeah. So uh, you know, in college, what I did was my teammates, whoever if they ever see this when put out, they're gonna laugh yeah. at me. But um, I took the G unit tank tops in college. We didn't have any money, but I found a printing shop and I had the lights. The lights are on, on the G yeah, unit. Yeah, but it was like uh, like bedazzled. Yeah. Right. Well, so like you had the whole. I had the lights. <laughs> I had the light switch. The sequence. Yeah. Light switch. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I had the, I had the light switch. Uh, G unit bedazzled in college, and I was selling them in yeah. college. You See, know? come so, on, already had the business mind yeah, in there, and, and so I was, I was kind of already there with it, and I knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to do it yeah. yet. Uh, and so what ended up helping me is getting getting around a lot of a lot of people that are smarter than me, yeah, um, and, and and experts at what they did, and getting your team together, and getting the team around, together, yeah. because that ultimately at the end of the day, and and I and I still struggle with this because I want to do everything. Yeah, I literally, I literally do, and sometimes you got to let people, you know, step back and let people do what they're great at doing. Come on. Work them to their strengths. Yes. Because I tell you, like, us as individuals, we're, we're, I, I'm a Leo, so I always want to do everything. I want to do everything. But once you start getting the team members in place that have the strengths in those areas, that's when you can kind of see your, your, your brand going further than it could have been with just you. Big time. Yeah. Uh, big time. And look, at the end of the day, I'll make all the decisions. Yeah. But w- what you want to do is, and I've been fortunate enough to play on the team my whole life. Yeah. And so there's no different than being on a team on football field and being out here in, the, in business. You're just leading the team. Absolutely. That's all you're really doing. Uh, and everybody got their strengths. Yeah. My coaches used to come to me and they say, hey, we, we need you to drop in coverage and cover it. Nuh-uh. Nah, no, yeah. coach. That ain't, that ain't <laughs> I'm, what not, I, I'm not the drop coverage guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, you talk about him. You want him yeah, to do exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Because that's what he does. Yes. I, I go get the quarterback. The strengths. That's the strength. Yeah. And so you started to, you know, what I do was is, is kind of build a, a team of people this, this strong, yeah. you know, and some guys is really good with numbers. Some guys is really creative. Some guys who just want to work and put things together. Yeah. They, they, you know, so every, this whole thing is about operating a team, and, and that's, what, that's what makes things go. And how, how do you come up with just saying, you know what, you want to be involved in this space of MMA? It having the, you know, the notoriety with UFC is getting with Dana White and what they're doing. How does someone like you kind of say, okay, I want a part of this, and what piece of your cake is relevant to what the game is now? I think um, for me, um, 
it's always it's always important to give homage to the people who open the doors. You, people don't understand or forget that you know MMA uh, would just got opened in New York in like yeah. two, 2014 or yeah. 15. Yeah, just recently. Just recently. Yeah, and so that ain't even that long ago. Yeah. Um, and so me being in this business now, you you understand the the roadblocks, the speed bumps, Come on. the walls you had to go through yeah. to get in order to get there, right? Nope, the venues you got to deal with saying, hey, we we don't want this in here, yeah. or we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. So now it's it's such a global phenomenon that the the doors open for guys like myself. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think a little bit with me, uh, we we got we have the next up and coming guys. Yeah. Right. And then so there's plenty of room and plenty of platforms, and these guys who train they're looking for an opportunity. Yeah. And so, um, you know, obviously me having a football background, that helps. Yes. Because, you know, it's easy for the market, promote, talk yep. about the credibility, league, talk about what I'm doing. You know, it's a little bit of a credibility there. Uh, but more importantly, I've also been around these, a lot of these guys for 17 years. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, well, what did I learn from the NFL? What did I learn working at Fox Sports, ESPN, yeah. NFL Network, in production, TV? Um, and so, you know, the contact list when it comes to TV production on, and all that stuff is long. Yeah, the resources are the there. The resources are there. And I think that a lot of those things help me out because I have relationships in, in all these yeah. different divisions where I can pick up the phone and say, yo, I got this going on. I need this, 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 and this. Can you help yeah. me? And uh, people are quick, man. And that just that that means a lot to me because I, I did something right. Yeah, absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah, like yeah. there's a lot of – especially when you're a top, um, when you're a big athlete, and uh, you know, sometimes you can be an asshole, yeah, to people, and you know, not signing autographs or just, yeah. just being, you know, not good to the fans. And so, when I can pick up the phone, you know, from something I did ten years ago, twelve years ago, how long? You know, ten years ago, and say, hey, I need, I need help with this, this, and this. I need a guy for this, this, and this. Yeah. Sean, no problem. And so when you can do that, things start to move very quickly yeah. for you because I don't have to call and I'm not trying to beg anybody to come. It's like, yo, okay, you got, yeah, yeah, look. Let's do it. Yeah. And so that's that's extremely helpful when you can do that. Does that show you now, like, where you at with, with MMA? It goes back to your NFL career. Like, when we talk about you working for NFL Network and being an analyst, because every life after football, like I was talking to my cousin Brandon, it's not easy yeah. to a lot of people to transition to what they want to do at the life after football. Was this, I mean, not it being right away, but something for you, was this right out the gate or this something you had to transition to? No, it was right out the gate. Yeah. I was... Matter of fact, uh, I made a uh, joke to the team because my last year in Buffalo, I was on like the vet con yeah. the vet minimum, right? And, and I'm in New York, so after taxes, that thing is cut. Come on, New York going to take a chunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I started looking at what I made, you know, my last year in Buffalo, and I was like, okay, hold on, TV over here. I got the clothing brand right of it. Oh, okay, good. I ain't tackling nobody no more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right? got to tackle nobody yeah, no more. Yeah. Yeah, that was like, that was that. And then, um, you know, I, I do miss it. I, yeah. I, I feel that, um, you know, football is the greatest sport in the world. Now, I know, you know, soccer and all that stuff, when you get yeah. internationally, people are going to see that. But it's something about football that brings something out of you that you didn't know you had. Yeah. Um, and it, it'll make a, a man out of you or make a sucker out of Come you on. real quick. Come on. And, and one of those two will happen because at some point you're going to cave into an injury. Yeah. You're going to be tired as hell in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Something's going to happen in training camp or something. You know, you're going to have to find that way to push yeah. through. Um, and so when I retired, I was ready. Yeah. I was ready. I was prepared. And when I talk to guys now, I say the, the hardest thing you're going to have to do is when you retire and you're not ready is have that downtime. Come on. And that downtime is the worst time. It's the worst time. Yeah. It's the absolute worst. And so I, when I talk to any any former active, whoever, I say, yeah. get ready to do what you want to do now. Right. And so that day when they come tell you you're done or you want to go tell them you're done. Yeah. You just go on to the next thing, man. And, and I think the NFL just in general as a whole provides a platform to to do more stuff. Yeah. You do it right. Meaning you, you know, do the organization actually. Yeah. Of course you want to get paid. You want exactly. your money. Exactly. Uh, but do it right and go there, build some relationships, get, you know, get out of what they're trying to get out of yeah. you. And then you move on, man, and then you, you have that access to the biggest platform in this country. Yeah, because people will always look at NFL, you know, vets. Oh, I had Justice Apollo in here, and he still works with uh, the alumni and Merton Hanks within NFL. And just kind of going back to what you were talking about with, with, with the downtime. Um, I just had a mental health. He's a performance coach for the Tennessee Titans. Like, that downtime, I feel, it kind of like not glorified but magnifies what's going on after the football, after football is going on, the mental health, what you guys got to deal with. Because if you don't have that plan and you have that downtime, on time it's kind of tough to deal with it is it is really tough yeah. and even i struggle with it i have plenty of stuff lined up yeah i have plenty of things to do and even i struggle with it some days i'll get off a set you know i was at the nfl network or whatever yeah. at the time and i'm like damn this it yeah you know and so um and i had my clothing line i was still working out heavy and training and all that stuff i got a chance to work with the wwe yeah. for a little bit and do, uh, do a lot of stuff but 
you know, that that thing is gone, right? That adrenaline rush. That adrenaline, yeah. adrenaline rush is gone if you're running out to 70-plus thousand in the stadium, yeah. millions of people watching. If you got a Sunday night of Monday night football, you're the only show on. You only Come show on. on. Yes. Everybody You are watching. the show. You are the show. Yeah. And so everybody's running home to, to watch that Sunday night or Monday night football game. You're going out putting on yeah. the clinic. And so those calls, those text messages, all those things. Now, fortunately, like everything for me is pretty much the same. Yeah. Right. I didn't have, you know, I didn't really rely on football to make me who I was. Yeah. I don't care if, if I go somewhere and people don't know who I am. Like some people get mad at me because I'll introduce myself to them. Right. Yeah. And they be like, dude, I know you. I think no, I just, you know, that's just yeah. that's just how I am. Like I don't I don't walk in and like everybody and expect know who everybody I am. to know who I yeah, am. Yeah. I don't. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, I'll introduce myself. But I think that uh, a lot of the guys who who lean so heavy on football to become who they are when they don't have that, those are the ones that struggle. Yeah. And so I said, man, find your identity, who you are. Yeah. You know who your, who your family is. Your, like, just find out the tr- the true thing of yourself because yeah. when you get done, it's going to expose what you're not. It expose that what you couldn't like. You had the luxury of being in the league and right. you had the luxury of you know having the notoriety. Like Shaq said at first, he's like, how can you go from winning championships to not having that feeling? So that's why he kind of took on the moniker of Diesel, the DJ. He goes out there and does his thing where I feel like there's that void for players, you know, now and then. Because we go back and we talk about Junior Seau, something that you was always compared yes. to being a Charger and what he had to go through and endure. Like, how was the pressures of you being drafted by the Chargers and you just kind of being in that whole realm of San Diego just kind of put a pressure on you as being from Maryland? Dude, let me tell you. Um, so being on the East Coast, I grew yeah. up in Prince George County, Maryland, a little bit outside of Washington, D.C. area. And, of course, I, I watched football. I watched the Chargers. I knew Junior say I yeah. was, right? All Everything linebacker and all, you know, just the, the linebacker yeah. and the player just he was. Just the lineage, yeah. I didn't know how big Junior say I was until I got to San Diego. Man. I had no idea. Yeah. I didn't know he was San Diego. Yeah. And um, I quickly found out because uh, he had say I was the restaurant. Yeah, the restaurant. All yeah. his charity stuff. He was, Junior was, when you think about San Diego, he's the first person. If it's not him, it's Tony Gwynn. Yeah. Right? Just one of the two that's that's like San Diego. Yeah. Legends. Legends. And so um, I had my, my, my big rookie year. I had yeah. a, you know, came out uh, defensive rookie of the year and all pro and all that stuff. All, uh, a pro bowl. Yeah. And there was an article written in um, in the Union Tribune, oh, wow. which is the, paper, the newspaper down at the time. And the article basically compared me to Junior Seau. Ah, good old comparison. And you know, I don't I, I don't like comparisons from the start, yeah. unless you say, hey, this guy's got he's got speed like yeah. him or something like that. But this article was was literally in depth, good, yeah, yeah, comparing me to Junior Seau. And I'm like, dude, that's a lot. That's what 21 year old kid to get Come thrown on. at because I looked up to Junior. And you know, you you hear those uh, those stories like how somebody see Michael Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. They got this like aura or something behind. <laughs> they them. got that aura behind. They got them. that yeah. thing like yo, some <laughs> you know some some uh, like spiritual being yeah. just walked in the door, right? <laughs> he just walks with a beam over yeah. his head. Yeah, and that's how I looked at Junior. Yeah, and um, when I seen Junior, it was almost like this this thing like I without him saying anything, I felt when he walked in. Yeah. Um, and by the way, like I knew, I found everything out. Like what time, how much he was working. I was asking everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. I Sponging, being a sponge. Every his, his physical. I got his physical therapy. I got every everything that Junior say I had. Yeah. I went out. I want to say, okay, how many days a week he's working out? Yeah. He had this thing called the Breakfast Club where he'll work out like five or six o'clock in the morning, wow. super early, and then work out with the team. Like this, he was he was next level. Yeah. And so what I the, what I started to do was is find out everything that Junior say I did. If he was, you know, dieting somewhere, I, I want to know what he yeah. drank. I, like, <laughs> what his diet was I looking like. Di- everything. Yeah. I wanted, you know, so uh, to have that kind of, to have that comparison at such a young age, yeah. you know, kind of, I was like, shit, man, you know, that's that's a lot. But it was, you respect that, yeah. you appreciate it. But I'm like, dude, there's it's only one Julian say yeah. I do. Like he was, he was on a different planet. And kind of be, have that comparison where, you know, us as fans growing up, you were kind of like, oh, shit, this, this kid's doing some things. Because Lights Out came in and 56 was there, so the comparisons were there. But it goes back to where the pressure was on you at such a young age. Like, you were, I was talking about somebody the other day where you and DeMarcus Ware could have switched positions easily or switched – Draft positions easily. Like if he, if you would have went to Dallas and he would have went to San Diego, we could be talking a whole different conversation right now. Do you ever think about those comparisons as well? Yeah, uh, only when I travel to, to Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm at DSW, I'm going, I'm going through it. Um, yeah, because it's it's two fan bases that I was connected to that I will always kind of be connected to because of what happened in the yeah. draft. One, the Giants, because what happened with yes, Eli, Eli, and, and Philip. And so when I'm in New York, oh, I wish you were here. Like you know, yeah. I, I get that. 
And then uh, when I'm in Dallas, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, Hall, you know, uh, D. D. Ware is going yeah. to the Hall of Fame. They got, they, they got a great one, you yeah. know. And I always say that D. Ware is was was not only a great ball player, man, but just a great because I know yeah. him too. So it's like a great person. Yeah, same draft class. Um, yeah, and so um, but I I, I did think of that to the compared, uh, and this is why I used to think about it. So half my family growing up was divided in between Redskins fans and Cowboys, and Cowboys fans. Okay, <laughs> so the house was divided. Already. Oh, it was it yeah. was divided, and so you know people. From where we were, wasn't Chargers fans. Yeah, you know they were either Redskins or or Cowboys. Yeah, you were you were one of the two, and so um, when I got drafted, they were everybody thought I was going to the Cowboys, Cowboys. because that's yeah. that's who all the everybody had me going to yeah. Jerry Jones and Bill Parcells. Everybody thought I was going to the Cowboys, and so I remember people, um, and you know family members, coach, they, had, they had custom made already you know, jerseys, Merriman <laughs> jerseys, and so I didn't I didn't want to go to the draft. Yeah, I was invited. But I never ended up going to the draft because I didn't want to sit there. Remember, the draft used to be long as yeah. hell. It used to be a day. You used to sit there. People who was in the draft that didn't get drafted were just sitting there. It was it was yeah. a 30, 30 minutes to an hour mm-hmm, pick. Mm-hmm. You would just sit there. The top the top 10 picks took like five hours. Yeah, because that's the ones they wanted. And then they would start going down the line, analyzing everybody on right. TV. Yeah. And so the last thing I wanted is I'm sitting there with a camera in my face the whole time. <laughs> and, they, and they're this close. Like – they're this close watching yeah. you, and so I was like, I don't, I don't want that damn camera yeah. on my face. So I stayed home and rented a, a big house uh, back in Maryland. All my friends, family, coaches, everybody. Party for the family. Yeah, everybody yeah. came. Um, but I started noticing like people walking in with like little plastic bags. Yeah. And so I'm like, man, everybody got you know. What are these plastic bags coming yeah, from? Yeah, why are they bringing you know? What are they bringing money? And so yeah. I'm, about, I'm about to get money. We don't need money. Um, but they had jerseys. Yeah. Custom jerseys. So I had. Um, and Redskins that year, Commanders now, yeah. but Redskins then, they had the, uh, I think, the number nine or ten pick, whatever yeah. them Carlos Rogers. That's the, right, that's the, right. The cornerback. And so the draft class had me drafted anyway from the third pick to the 15th pick. Because you was in the middle somewhere. Because I was in the so middle. So you didn't even know. I didn't know. Time. Yeah. Um, and actually, the Cowboys thought that I was going to go three to Cleveland. They ended up going to Braylon. Yeah, Braylon Edwards. Edwards yeah. Um, and so Cowboys even told me they didn't think I was going to be there because if they passed me up, then the Vikings or the Redskins yeah. or the um, – They just thought they didn't have a shot at they, you. They said, hey, we, we don't even think you're going to be here, but yeah. if you are, we're going to draft you. Got it. And the Chargers told me the same thing. So I knew I was going to – no later than 12. Yeah. 11 or 12, I was going somewhere too. Um, but the house was – my house was divided, divided between the two. Yeah. And so all, all hell bro- broke loose. And I had people like uh, like family members pulling their jersey <laughs> – out the bag as they're about to announce, and you like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, oh. I'm like, hold on, and uh, you just it was silent, yeah, yeah. you know, it was silent. Well, I only put this bag in there, yeah. right? You know, everybody's like, hey, hey, go get y'all hundred dollars back, yeah. whatever that jersey cost, whatever the custom cost, right? Yeah. Uh, but what happened was, it's it, why that why they were picking to Marcus, um, Coach Schottenheimer was already calling me, yeah. And uh, when Marty Schottenheimer called me, the first thing he said, he said, um. Uh, Hey, Sean, you ready to be a charge? And I said, yeah. you guys ready to draft me? I'm trying to get to work. Like, yeah. what's up? <laughs> and uh, so they did, man. So, they, you know, I did that and really never looked back. And, and talking about the Marty Schottenheimer teams, the North Turner teams, and we always have this conversation with a lot of Charger fans, those were good teams. We're yeah. talking about LT. You guys had Antonio Gates, Igor Alshansky. Like, what do you think was the cause for you guys not getting to the big game or winning the big game? Because well, you guys had the talent. Yeah, yeah. Inexperience, for yeah. one. I mean, um, I think that people are forgetting, like, we had, in order to get to a championship back when I played, you had to go to Ben Roethlisberger, yeah. Peyton Manning, Peyton and then Tom Manning. Brady. Whew. So that road yeah. was was next level. You Three Hall of Fame quarterbacks, you know, you got to go through the best one. Yeah. And then you got to go through the next best one. So you got three or four guys you got to get to yeah. to get there. So at, at some point in time, you're going to run into that. Yeah. Um, and then so the final pit stop was, uh, was, was Tom that put yeah. us out twice and then – um, you know, Ben Roethlisberger, who put us out in the AFC Championship game as well. Yeah. So it, to get there was tough. But let's, I'm, I want to make this clear. We had the best team of the decade. Come on, man. You know, we had, I was at a lot, at a lot of the games. Yeah. I was in Brandon's family section, and I said, they're, they're, and I'm a diehard Niner fan. Yeah. So we were sitting there. I'm like, dude, Chargers are like one, one I don't know what it was, one play away or yeah. what it was. You was right there. Yeah, it was, it was always that in a way. It was like uh, the, the plays that we made mistakes on, we, the Patriots didn't. Yeah. And when we made a mistake, they capitalized off of it. And that got that bit, kind of bit us in the ass every single yeah. year while we're there. And then 
you only have a, a certain window, right? When you got Ladanian Thomas and Lorenzo yeah. Neal, uh, you know Antonio Gates, Philip River. So you got you know this core group of guys, and I played with Jamal Williams. You said yeah. you know, Luis Castillo, all the Sean Phillips, all these guys. Jamal already had a nice Pro, defense as well. Yeah, uh, Quentin Jammer. You yeah, know, dude, we we Eric Weddle, we we were Come stacked, on. stacked. You know? We were stacked, and so by, matter of fact, man, I, I will tell you this: in 06, when we were playing teams, it was a joke. By the time we got to the games, yeah. <laughs> oh it, really? <laughs> oh man, it was it was like. Um, we were so good. Yeah. And our practices, we were we were so competitive every yeah. day in practice. Um, it got to the point, man, with me and Lorenzo Neal, we we had to we had to brother in law each other. Oh shit. So <laughs> listen, low low Neal was no joke. Yeah. Come Lorenzo Neal was no joke. And so we had this buddy system going because we would start clashing. Yeah. And then we said, dude, we keep doing this. Somebody ain't gonna make it to the game. Yeah. And so we'll we'll start to go on like on the run plays and stuff and getting about a foot apart and just pull up. Yeah. And just stop. Because you guys were going hard. We could we, because we were everybody was so competitive. Yeah. We had a team full of Hall of Famers and stars and 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 we were so talented. Yeah. Um and I think that at the end it just kind of bit us because we we made the mistakes, even though we were a better team mm -hmm. than all these guys. That we made the mistakes and people just capitalize off of our mistakes. And like you said, it best. I think the window of opportunity, I mean, when you have that such good talent. If you don't do it in that window, you're starting to lose pieces due to salary cap or whatever have you, trades, and then you don't have the pieces of the puzzle that you guys thought you had at the beginning. You got you got three to four good years of the same yeah. team being together. Yeah. Right. And I'm talking about for contracts get involved, injuries get involved, coaching staff leave. And that's your window. That's your window. Yeah. You got three or four and look and look at all all the NFL teams, right? Yeah. The uh, Legion uh, Legion of Boom, right? With Seattle. Come on. What they have. They had a three year window. Yeah. All the guys, Cam Chancellor, yeah. Sherman, yeah, all Sherm. these guys are together, right? Um, and then you go over to and I was talking about the Bills. The Bills on yeah. that on that third year, yep. right now, where if they don't get it done this year, you know, Stephon could be gone. Yeah, you know, the co it's, it's going to be a Allen lot. starts hitting that that wall, and you start you lose the window. Right. Yeah. You lose the window, and so we had that three year window from 06 to 09. Yeah. I would say 06 to 10, 9, 9 yeah. 10, somewhere around there. Damn, it was a good three years though. Yeah, you, you had <laughs> because we were we were so talented, man. Even when North came in, yeah. So, you know, I, I love Marty to death. He was my yeah. favorite coach. Uh, but even when Norv came in, we were uh, we, our mentality switched a little bit because yeah. you know he's an offensive coach. I would I would say that. But man, we were still so damn good. And then Norv is a offensive genius. Yeah, offensive minded genius. Come on. And so we would it would be times in practice we couldn't stop the offense. Yeah. I mean, Vincent Jackson out there. All I yeah. mean, they had Malcolm Floyd. Malcolm Floyd, man. dude, like. You know, Brandon will come in, and yeah. you know, just it. And he he's catching the ball. Yeah. He's not just out there blocking. And, and um, you know, look, dude, our starting our starting running back was LT Ladainer. Yeah. Backing him up was Michael Turner. Come on, backing Michael Turner up was Darren Sproles. Darren Sproles, same draft class. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> um, so when you look at a team that talented, where you got Darren Sproles yeah. as your third string running back, <laughs> think about that. You know, this yeah. is this is all purpose. This is all you know, future Hall of Famer. Yeah player that's the third string and he did everything else you know kick return and punt return and stuff like that but you got Darren Sproles coming off the bench your team got to be pretty damn good yeah do you think at that time when you being a rookie and be having like a year or two under your belt was it too much too soon as, as far as you being the player that you were and kind of saying I got to take on not a lot of responsibility because you guys were that good but you had the Roethlisbergers the Mannings the the Brady's so you told, we talked about it with Junior Seau you being a kid there's another whole amount of pressure for that yeah, I think um, you know, for me, I was uh, I always had a different mentality yeah. because I, I got a chance to be around a lot of uh, NFL athletes before I got there. Okay, you know, and so um, I was around Levar Arrington a lot, yeah. Ray Lewis, and and I was around a lot of these guys yeah. a lot. Um, and so I got a, I'm a sponge. Yeah, I'm, I'm like even still to the day, man. I'm like you know, soaking I get, up. I get around people with not with information. I'm like, listen, I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, all right, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna get that, and then um. You know, so being around them, your mentality is a little bit different. Yeah. You mature a lot faster. And so I was already NFL ready. Yeah. Before was, you even was in the NFL. Before I was in the NFL, yeah. I was just NFL ready. And in fact, the NFL style suited my play more than college because yeah. in college it's about system. System, exactly. Come on. And say it for the kids watching right now because they don't know about that. Yeah. In college, it's, it's about system. Your yeah. coach, whatever the coach implements a system in college, you're running that system. And that's the system you got to stick to. And that's the system you stick to. Yeah. In the NFL, the, mentality, the, the, the mindset is a little bit different. Yeah. You know, they want you to make plays. You know, so, hey, look, if you sit on that cover two as a corner, if you sit there on you know, the route, you, bet, you better pick it off. And you still make that play? Hey, you did what you had to you do. You did what you had to do. Yeah. You can make that same play, do the same thing in college, they're going to still rip you. Yeah. Because they want you to do what you what in they the tell system. you in the system, yeah. 
And in the pros, it was a little bit different. I remember, um, you know, the coaches, I would – look, sometimes they want me to come under a block, yeah. and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to make this play. Yeah. <laughs> and so they – I'm going to go make it do what it yeah, do. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, so the coach would be like, hey, go ahead. Yeah. You better make it. You know, and I'll go out and make it, and everybody clap. Like, yeah. Hey, uh, okay, yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. You made what it. are you? Oh, okay, yeah, as long as yeah, you made that play. Yeah, that was it. And that was something that they ran because, I mean, when you're in a system and you go to the NFL and you're making these transitions and kind of like adapting to what it is, as long as you're balling, you, you, you're all right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, Darrell Rivas is going into the Hall of Fame yeah. here, right? And he was one of the guys. He was, I mean, he watched so much film, he would sit on yeah. the plays, and you know that he ain't dropping like that in cover three. Exactly. You know? So, you know, yeah. he's just. But when you have exceptional players who can do it, yeah, that's what kind of separates you. Because hey, look, you, you might get burnt. You know, uh, Diggs. Yeah, um, come on, Trayvon Diggs. Trayvon Diggs is one of my, you know, one of my favorite players to watch. And let me, he will sit on some stuff yeah. now. <laughs> he gonna sit on it. And but the, the difference is with him, man. He's such a great player. Yeah. That okay, you, you might get burned once in a while. Yeah. But those game changing turnovers that you get are going up there in that chart as a game changing play. Yeah. And that's what that's what separates you from And that's a, a stat that people don't see yes. as well too, the game changing plays that you made. And you made a lot over your career. But where do you see the game now? I mean I call it I call it soft now because when you yeah. guys were playing and even before your time too, it was a little bit more not I wouldn't say dirtier. It was hitting harder. But from your transition to when you played to now, where do you see the game at today? I wouldn't I wouldn't call it soft because what I what I always vowed to myself not to be as like an old hater. Yeah. Right? <laughs> No, I just sounded just like an old hater. No, 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 and not, not you. And I mean, like, yeah, just in general. Yeah, old, yeah. you know, older players that, um, you know, kind of give it that speech. Oh, back in the day, we had to love back in my and day. Yeah. Back in the, you know, we can. Oh, they do. The, the times have changed. Yeah. And you got to kind of move with the move with the game, move yeah. with the times. And so my mentality switched a little bit. It's not that they're soft; it's what they're allowed to do. Absolutely, right. And so the rules. If the if the rules is telling you I, I can't do this because I'm going to get fined or ejected yeah. or I'm going to hurt the team in some kind of way, then you got to kind of go with the rules. So I don't think the guys necessarily got soft. It's just you had to. Change. The rules got more strict. The rules yeah. got more stricter. So you got to kind of go where with the where the rules take you. Yeah. Because you, I mean, especially sacking the quarterback, 39 and a half sacks, we're just, we're just throwing numbers out there. They protect the quarterback more a lot these days. Do you see it where a point where some of these D linemen, some of these linebackers are coming in, they're like, I don't know what you want me to do because if I hit them a certain way, I'm going to be called for the penalty and I'm going to get fined. It, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Um, my last, um, uh, in 2008, we were playing the Panthers. Uh, I got a fine game because I got cut blocked. Yeah. But I crawled to the quarterbacks and I didn't and tackle and I tackled them. Yeah, and so that's when they started to like implement some of these rules going at the legs. Because the year before, remember Tom Brady just throws right. ACL. They, yeah. they went straight into his legs. So after Tom Brady went down, they started looking at the quarterback position and as different. Yeah, and the more and more they started to pay guys like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and yeah. you know Justin Herbert's got that massive Oof. deal. Big you, deal. You want these, like you want these guys on the field. Yeah, and by, you want to protect it. You by want to protect means. them yeah. because that's the that's the shield. That's the NFL brand. These are the, the the people that fans come to the game yeah. and see. see. Yeah, you know, even me being a former player, man. I, I, you know, when Herbert does some of this shit, and I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I play with a great quarterback yeah. in Philip, but you know, you see some of these uh, some of these plays that Justin Herbert make, and you're like, dude. The, the fan of you comes out because yeah. you know that it's only a certain amount of very special people who can go out and make that play. Yeah, exactly. You coming from the East Coast and come playing on the West Coast, you've seen the transition with the San Diego fan base. It going to L.A., did you see a big difference in that, you being an ex-player and being with a – because I, when I go out there, like Brandon talks about all the time, San Diego fans and L.A. fans are, are different. What's it to you? Yeah, well, you know, coming from the East Coast, uh, it was definitely a, you know, change. Yeah, culture shock. Yeah, it was a culture yeah. shock in a good way for me. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, I never even seen a, a palm tree until I got to San Diego. Wow! So I, so I came in for the, for yeah. the pre-draft stuff, and so we were going in, um, and I'm flying in, and we're about to land over over the water. Yeah, and the sun was hitting off the ocean, and the palm trees. <laughs> you were like, "Hold up!" I'm like, "Man, hold on, please." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I want to be here. Yeah, it was yeah. one. It was one of those things where, um, you know, I grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland, a little yeah. bit outside of Washington D.C. Uh, went to went to University of Maryland, so I stayed home. Turf. I'm a turf for life, and I stayed home. But I think the the open it opened my eyes yeah. to being on the West Coast and just seeing a different lifestyle. And then it was it was a uh, you know it was a transition for me, yeah, for sure. Um, but then you know the L.A. 
the, the LA and San Diego fan base, they just never liked each other anyway. Yeah. That, that's why I was like, when they made the transition or moved to LA, I was telling them, people in San Diego, how are you guys going to accept it now that they're like, we're not. Right. <laughs> that was yeah. a simple question, but I, I, we're yeah. not. You, you, got, you got some because, you know, the, the team is much better yeah. and it's more exciting. So you got some of them just kind of trickling in. Yeah. Uh, even though they reluctantly don't want to, yeah. <laughs> um, little by little, though. yeah. But they, but they got it. They have such a special team yeah. right now. Yeah, you know, with Derwin James, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack. Mm. I, I get it that the San Diego fans are upset because they they got it right. But you better ride this window. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know with these new guys that's coming in, is this like new energy that's yeah. in that? It, it's something about this team, man, that I haven't seen and felt in in a long time. Yeah, and they got a real shot. And so the 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 fan the San Diego fans that actually do come out and support and yeah. and do all this stuff, man, it's it's appreciated. Uh, but I no, I definitely one hundred percent understand you know some of them that don't, yeah. and, we'll, and we'll never, yeah, right. And so that's just a part of. It. And I think through football, you talked about how you guys were dealing with Brady, you know Manning, and we're talking about. I think Herbert and his team they're also dealing with the Mahomes and the Allen. Oh, and stuff it's like even that. worse. Yeah, you know because it's, now <laughs> it, it's even worse because you know like the whole big news of of the running back. Yeah. Being devalued and all that stuff, right? And the reason why that's important is because these quarterbacks are ten times yeah. valued now than they were when I was playing. Exactly. And I was going to ask you about that. Like, what do you think about the running back being undervalued now? It's every five, five or ten years. There's a different position. Yeah. And one this thing, year, just transitioned to the running to back. the running back. Yeah. The last couple of years, really. And so, what what people don't understand is, uh, you know, now that the quarterback is more valuable than anybody on the field. What they're doing now is just doing things to stop the quarterback. Yeah. And, you know, back then, I mean, if you had a, a run, like even Peyton Manning had Edron James. Yeah, come on. You know? And Edron so, James was a beast, too. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, you, Ben Roethlisberger, who he, he had, you know, he had somebody back there, too. He had Jerome Bettis. He had, he had big, the bus back yeah, there. And yeah, and so they had running backs. And so even the great quarterbacks back in the day had great running backs yeah. still by, behind them. But they were also running the ball 25-plus yeah. times a game. So – they wasn't now. They're not as valued anymore yes. because they're going to throw seventy percent of the time and throw thirty. Yeah, I mean run thirty percent. And exactly. So, um, you know, in this in this day and age, man, they're valuing anybody who can get turnovers on the defense yeah. side of the ball, and that's strip sacks, DNs, come on, outside linebackers, pass rushers. Yeah. Um, on the quarterback, cornerback, because you see these guys getting paid. Because guess what? Yeah, they got to go stop that number one wide receiver. <laughs> you know, and these receivers are getting faster and quicker every yeah, year. I mean, could you imagine? And I and I tell people in, in, this too: the cornerback position is the most difficult position to yes. play on the field. You on an island? You on an island? One on one. I mean, look, I ain't scared of nobody. Yeah, right? <laughs> but it will worry me a little bit to be out there one on one with Tyreek Hill. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, Justin Jefferson. It's I had Tyler Noah Funga. I had Tyler Noah Funga in here, and he said his welcome to the NFL moments when he lined up against Tyreek Hill in a preseason game. He went to make a call. Tyreek goes, "I got him," and blew right by him. Oh yeah, said, <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, you could you could forget about it. You know, yeah. Devontae Adams, these guys, Keenan Allen. I mean, you 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 out there one on one with yeah. some of these guys. You got to be thinking the back of your head, like, Ooh. oh man, you know, something coming. <laughs> and so when you when you look at, I think across the board. And what's going on with the NFL now? Yeah. Um, the people who can put points on the board is who getting paid. Got it. And the people who can stop them yeah. from putting points on the board are also getting paid. Because it works both ways. And I tell you, it's like we're talking about the running backs now. Well, you come from an, uh, an era, too, of running backs that were just, they were doing the do. You being a linebacker, who was like, name three linebackers, I mean, name three running backs, since we're talking about running backs, that you were like saying, because I know you ain't scared of nobody, right. but that was like, oh, I got to go meet, meet him in the hole. Um, Adrian Peterson. Yeah. For one. I keep hearing his name come up every time. He he he's on that list. He, yeah. he was number he's number one. But I would get a you know my my welcome to the NFL moment is when we were playing the Steelers. Okay. And Jerome Bettis was back. Ooh, the bus. Let me tell you, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> it's a big boy. It, he's big, man. But it was it was one of those things where you know this is when my mentality changed from coming to college yeah. because normally I leave my feet. I'm not gonna. I'm hitting anybody. Yeah. That ain't happened. Yeah. You know. When you hit when you hit and Jerome. I hit and I hit Jerome and he was, you know, he's so damn wide. Yeah. Right. And so you're trying to wrap your arms around it. It ain't going. It ain't happening. <laughs> and, you know, he's running and then before you know, it, you're up you're up on his chest, and you're sliding down, <laughs> and you're sliding down. And he was like, please, Lord, like somebody, you know. Somebody help me get somebody him. Help, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and you, I, I had to play it. I trickled down. I just grabbed it, I grabbed him by the legs yeah. and he went down. But it was three or four yards. Yeah. And that's never happened Come on. to me before. 
Um, and so I played in a different era where, you know, I played with Lorenzo Neal. Yeah. Dude, like, At you know, practice every day. I've seen him every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every day. And so you seeing that every day. And then, you you know, we played Priest Holmes was yeah. back there when Priest Holmes went down. Larry Johnson Man. stepped in. LJ, by, he was a beast. And Ricky Waters. Yeah. You know, all, all these guys, man. And um, back then, when it, Jam- Jamal Williams, I mean, Jamal uh, Lewis. Yes, from right? the Baltimore from Ravens. The Ravens. Yeah. yeah. Like, this, the style of running back has changed. But yeah. let me t- those guys, they were getting the ball 25 times a game. And, and that's what I'm saying. You had to go up against them. And you was, you was uh, the one that had to tackle them. And you and your defense did what they had to do. That's why I always ask people when they come. And com- not comparison, because like I guess I hate comparing. But it just has from that era to this era where they had people like Jamal Lewis. And they had those running backs like Jerome Bettis. Where it transitions Eddie over George, to Man, know. Eddie George and all that was doing that thing. Defensively, you being a defensive guy, like what, what, what comes to mind? with some of the names like Troy Polamalu comes to mind and say, hey, you know, what do you think about Troy? You know, they, uh, and Troy and Ed Reed being in this conversation, the best safety in the league. You were able to play against them. Yeah, and you know what's crazy is, um, I told you, I hate the comparison. Yeah. <laughs> because let me tell you, the, the comparison, what it does is you're talking great about somebody else and the other per- the, people automatically assume you're talking down yeah. on the other one. Yeah. And it's like, man, I'm, I'm not, how can you, you know, like Ed Reed is my, to me, is the greatest safety I've ever yeah. played. You know, every Ronnie Lott, and you know, yeah, I don't, I don't Ronnie want to, Lott. Yeah, I don't know if you want to go strong, weak, yeah. you know, free safety, whatever. Yeah, but we I'm just talking about safety in general. In general. Yeah. You know, you every Ronnie Lott, Steve, I love Steve Atwood, yeah. all these guys, Darren Woodson, hitters, people all the hitters, talking about a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely hitters. Um, but then you got Troy Palomalo, dude, who you look back at some of his film. Yeah, it's like what? Yeah, <laughs> How, what? <laughs> yeah, I was I was saying something the other day on the NFL films, and he's running full speed up to the line of scrimmage and jumped out, like yeah. That'll never happen again. Yeah, time to cadence and everything. I was like, what? time to cadence. What? There was a no false start offsides right there. He was. You looked up, and this dude is on one side of the field this way. The ball yeah. hikes, and it's thrown on the opposite side, Come forty on. yards away, and he's right there for the <laughs> interception or hit. Yeah. And so you, you have guys like that that we're. I, I believe that we're we're not going to see again. Yeah. And that's that was what my what my question was for. Do you think we'll see guys like that in this era? Going no. forward, yeah, no, because of the rules, because of the rules, and you know, just a change in general. Yeah, um, there's a lot. For, okay, and this is the reason why I, I talk about the Pro Bowl not being as good as this. Yeah, this, people got they're making so much money. Why would? Yeah, exactly. Yes, we're, we're gonna get to the Pro Bowl stuff too. Yeah, you being a Pro Bowler as well. Yeah, go ahead and continue your point. Yeah, they, they, they won't be in this day and age because of you know I say salary cap and I say because of you know the rules and stuff and, mm-hmm. and guys aren't on the teams as long as enough that they used to be. Yeah, and, and so you know it's kind of. And I'm not saying the guys don't love the game. Yeah, I, I want to. I definitely don't want to say that because I know plenty, plenty yeah. do. Not all of them, but plenty, plenty Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Um, but the the love for the game is kind of shifted to I love this game and I want to be the man to yeah. get in the bag. Come on. And so while I do believe you want to get paid because yeah. you go out there, you put your body on the line, you got family. You, you, this is what you do for. This is your job. Yeah. And, and you want to make the most at your job. Yes. Um, but it, to me. I used to rather go into a room and somebody be like, "Yo, that's that's Sean Merriman, like South, like that dude, yeah. is, that that he was it, right? That motherfucker right yeah. there." Yeah. And so I rather have that than somebody's like, "Hey, he's making twenty million this year or fifteen yeah. million. Exactly. You know. And so, and I'm not saying that that, that anything is wrong with either mentality, yeah. but when it comes to why I played the game, I wanted to be the best at what I did. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and kind of when I when I retired and on my way out, the, the transition of like guys getting paid. Yeah. The bag became more important than you being just that dude. Yeah, and these contracts are more now. Like I always talk about, we talk about contracts and about getting the bags. Like you could be a football player, get what your contract is, what you think is the top, and then you can look at these soccer dudes that are getting Dubai money. Then you look at these it's baseball players, down half a billion dollars. Yeah, come on, man. So that's why it's like it's teetering with adapting to what's available in your genre, I mean, in your sport at the time. Where I say these kids now, do you think? This is my other second part of the question. Do you think social media has a lot to do with how we approach the game nowadays because of, you know, the instant gratification, the instant post of these people that are going now? Well, I, it's definitely changed the players. Yeah. Right? And I always say this. When, when I see guys, like, po- they got great social media. Yeah. And they don't do shit during the season. I'm like, you're an influencer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, look, not, nothing's wrong with that. Yes. By the way, hey, look, but you go have a big following when you're done, but you're not it. Yeah. No. You ain't, you know, you're not built like that. And so these guys are posting all the workouts and yes. killing it. Doing, and then they disappear. Tell them, Sean. <laughs> during the season. They disappear and don't do anything. Yeah, what happened? And, and I'm like, yo, I thought you was, you was on that grind. Yeah. And it's that that one-minute hype clip. Yes. Right? For the likes and the 60 follows. Seconds, that's yes. 60 seconds. I'm working. I'm doing yeah. it. Like, are oh, you working? But the season, oh, man, we 
catches on your tackles? When, yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. Stats, stats. And I'm like, let me say, yeah, I'm, I'm adding all this up. And, oh, you a damn influencer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You got more likes than you got tackles. You, you got more shit. likes than you got tackles. You know, you got, you know, you ain't on, even on the field. Yeah. And so, uh, and so I think that, you know, as far as social media, for one, I think it's great yes. because uh, a guy can build his brand. And Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm all about brand building. Yes. And in fact, you know, if I had social media back when I very first yeah. started out, um, you know, things would be even bigger now Absolutely. than than it is. But I think that um, the social media has kind of got given somebody like a, a instant pat on the back. Yeah. Instant. Instant. Yeah. Pat on not the back. earned. No, no, no. Instant. <laughs> it's not earned. Because your earned is on Sunday. Yeah. Absolutely. Or Mondays, whatever day you plan yeah. on. That's 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 what's going to come down to, hey, that off-season workout video you posted, all right, I see you put it to work. Yeah. But then you get you have some of these guys that post a great hype video, and, and they all, got 3,000 comments yeah. under them, yeah. and they don't do jack shit during the season. Yeah. And you sit around like, oh, you're an influencer. That's okay. <laughs> exactly. That's you, got so you, might well just quit that. you might as well just be this influencer full yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem with that. But we talked about social media and business, and we're talking about where, you know, you being out of league now, and now you're starting with the lights out and the MMA stuff. Do you kind of find that as, a, as an asset to your companies nowadays for the social media? Yeah, big time. Yeah. Big time. Even we talk about the sign them up and don't sign them up videos. Yeah. Like some of those get, you know, three and four plus million views. Yeah. You know, some of them got plenty of like seven, eight million views. Yeah. And so obviously when you're when you're promoting and stuff, because what I I came in at a different thing. We haven't spent any money in marketing. Yeah. I haven't spent this is all organic. This is all yeah. organic. Everything Homegrown. everything we've done is because I'm, you know, uh, I've been fortunate enough to get in on radio, Absolutely. get on podcast, yeah. TV, whatever it is. So we've been fortunate in the situation to market. Uh, including all the social media posts, it's all social media. Yeah, we haven't spent anything, not one dime in like advertisement, yeah. not one dime trying to get a space somewhere. It's so all been o- organic. But the truth be told, man, I you know I want some of these other fighters to get big, man, yeah. get a name. <laughs> like I'm not trying to do it. I'm not trying to be the like. Yeah, and that's when you have to dip into the marketing fund and kind of say, okay, you know, we're gonna got a fight. We got a big fight coming up. We right. probably have to put some marketing dollars in it as well. Yeah, and, and so you you want because ultimately, um, and and I've been fortunate enough to be around a lot of great athletes with yeah. personalities and. Um, and it, I can see a lot of discipline and work yeah. ethic and stuff. So when I'm looking at some of these upcoming fighters, I can be like, you know, he's going to be a dog yeah. or she's going to be a dog. Because you see the total package at that point. Right. Yeah. And so some of these younger fighters, they have a different like aura yeah. about them. And they come in, you know, they're on time to the weigh-ins. You tell, they got to show up at a certain time and yeah. place. You know, they're set. They got their medical. They got So you can tell like, okay, yeah, that, that, that kid yeah. is going to be successful. So I like that part of it. I think the flip side of that is is that what I try to get a lot of these fighters to understand on, on the other side is that they have to be act, active on social media. Yeah. Because, you know, people can bitch and complain about, you know, Conor McGregor and all these people making money, but Come look on. at their social medias. Yeah. Look how active they are. Look yeah. how much they're promoting themselves. They definitely need that social media presence. They need, yeah. You, so you need that presence. Yeah. You need to promote yourself and then return. I will or the company will. Somebody will also get behind you. But you, you got, you know, I, I, I had a fighter, um, <laughs> who I, who, our last fight we had in May. And their their uh, profile was on private. Oh no, that's a big red flag right yeah. there. Yeah, and so <laughs> what you trying to hide? Yeah. yeah, so the the profile the profile was on private. private and yeah. I'm like, I'm like, man, are you, are you trying to fight? Are you trying yeah. to stay? Are you hide from the from the feds or something? Like, what's, <laughs> what you hide? Yeah, what's, what's Mr. Going private? On? Yeah, you know. And it was one of these things where I was trying to explain to them. Because to, to me, too, man, I I, I just genuinely want to help these yeah. guys too, right? Yeah, we I got a business to run. I'm gonna do that. But I think that you know if I can do anything to help these guys, because I, that's how I am. Yeah, why not? And so I, I had a conversation with this particular fighter, and I said, "Man, if you don't get your ass on yeah. private, <laughs> for real, you know, it like, is real." Yeah, yeah, you know, and they did, and they started posting a couple of things about the fight, and they sold like sixty to eighty tickets. Yeah. And I said, "Well, you got out there, and they started posting some fight videos yeah. and talking about the fight coming up, and they like sold sixty to eighty tickets. Yeah. Obviously, they got a cut. We paid them a little bit off the tickets, and we take care of the guys. And yeah. so." I was like, man, you, you got to have the social media to be able to promote yourself so other people can also get behind you as well. Because it definitely has to be a part of what their branding is as well. Yeah. These are up and coming fighters. You want to try to get them out there. You kind of like leaving you guys in the dark if you got a private account and you not really have that social media presence. Yeah. And because they if they do do something good on so on, on their fights, they can go straight back to the social media. Right. Look, I just knocked out this dude. And I just had this interaction with Sean Merriman. Like, there's a whole different thing that I think a lot of these kids and a lot of up and coming fighters that who watch this show they need that part of the package. If someone's like, oh, I don't need my social media. Like, shit, you better talk to Sean, I'll tell you. Yeah. You need that. And then because there's two things they're fighting for. Um, obviously, for money. Yeah. Right? They're looking to get paid. Um, also, too, you don't have to be a mega star to be big. Yeah. Some of these guys, 
got incredible stories, right? They full time jobs, get off to get off and work out in the morning, mm-hmm. or train in the morning and come back for late uh, weights and conditioning yeah. in the afternoon. But they they got a full six to eight hours yeah. in between that, and so people can relate to things. Absolutely, you don't have to be a superstar. Yeah. Somebody out there also had to work a full hour day. They got kids. They came home. Maybe they. Yeah. Some of these guys are sleeping in the gym, you know, getting maybe uh, they can't pay their managers or coaches yeah. or whoever. So that maybe they somewhere sweeping a mop in the gym yeah. to, to to give back or you know do organizing something. Yeah. And so people can relate to you. Yeah. And so it's important for these fighters, it, even if you're not big. Yeah. To let these let people out here know what you got going and on and what your so grind is and yeah. what your grind is. They definitely won't because I like you said it best because if they see that through your social media, because you're telling your story about you and your brand. If they see you on, on social media, you're grinding in the, and in the gym six to eight hours a day, you're sweeping over here, they're more they're more personable to buy a ticket to your fight because they've seen your journey through this thing that we got here called a phone. You know what I mean? And they go through with social media and they say, look, that's the marketing tool that people, that's that's free for right. you. And how you market yourself and how you sign up for your I, I think that's what uh, the, the UFC has just done it bigger and better than anybody. Yeah. Uh, with UFC Embedded and all the stuff that they're doing, whatever, because... I think that there's a there's a fighter that can relate to everybody in this world for something. Yeah. Right? Maybe they had, you know, got fired and let off. Maybe they're homeless at some point in time. Maybe they lost some parents. Story need to well, be told. You know, story need to be told. And then there's somebody out there going to be like, man, I lost my parents too. And relate. You know, and relate. And so by, by right now, you got somebody that's following you that you don't even know just because they know your story. Yeah. And so that needs to be out there. And then, you know, that's why I've always applauded the UFC for because they did a great job about letting these people know. Yeah. And so I'm a big fan of storytelling. And, you know, being in the NFL is nobody bigger, Come right? On. NFL films and their build up yeah. to the to the to the Shout games. out to the Sable family, man. Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's um, you know, they just did it right. So that's that's my background and what I know what I know best. And just having that background and having that know how for like, you know, we talk about Pro Bowls earlier. Um, and just to kind of switch gears for me, you being in the Pro Bowl, you kind of seeing, like, we used to always go out to Pro Bowl for it to be in a party. And now it's just a big two-hand touch game now, right? What do you see the future of this Pro Bowl thing going? Or is there going to be a future for it? Hey, as long as they got 8 million plus views, yeah. y'all get your eyes out there and play dodgeball <laughs> now. <laughs> you know? Look. Go on, play that dodgeball you know, game. You know, if I'm, if I'm Roger Goodell, man, I'm like, hey, look, when you throw the ball, you got you to gotta put the... <laughs> You, gotta, you know, because they still get. You've seen the movie, damn you guys. Yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're still getting, you know, eight million plus yeah, views, yeah. and so people are like, oh, cancel them. No, they won't. Yes. You know, and if I, like I said, if I'm anybody in the NFL office, I'm like, you, when you go out there, you yeah. got to. <laughs> but I think that goes back to what we just right. talked about. The public wants to see what the players are doing when there is no football, when right. it is Pro Bowl time. Okay, if it's a dodgeball game, shit, I'm an NFL fan. I'm going to sit there and watch this goddamn dodgeball yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah, because you still, you know, at the end of the day, you still get a chance to see your favorite player. Yeah. Right? And that's that's most in important. In that light. In that light. Yeah. Having fun. Some of these guys, some of these guys just, just athletic freaks. You see them do some wild stuff. Yeah. You know, the throwing contest they have. Uh, one recommendation I want to make back to bring that that forty yard race or that thirty yard whatever. I, I, yeah, I think because there's so much talk in the NFL about who's the fastest, yeah. who's this, who's that. Always right, locker room talk. I would love to see you know Tyreek Hill and Waddle. Yeah, race. You go know? at it. Just go at it, and then you know run you know whoever to Saquon or race. Yeah, people would love to see that. I mean, those matchups are like MMA matchups. You match them up with the right people, they're gonna get them views. Let me let me tell you, I think that they would add millions of viewers yeah. by bringing that back. I think they should bring back the bench contest, yeah. the twenty two, the twenty two reps. Come on. Um, and so I think you know the, the, the dodgeball and all that stuff is fun. I yeah. watch it; it's cool. It's more for the kid. I think kids yeah. love it. Let me be more kid friendly. Yeah, it's more kid friendly. The families. Yeah, so I think I think that that's cool. But I I do believe if they were to bring back. The, the the 225 max yeah. test, the the 40 yard uh, yeah. 40 yard dash race, the worldwide of sports type era that they had them little I, obstacle course races and yeah. all. That. <laughs> I I think that they would get back up to yeah. the, whatever the form of yeah. viewership was if they would add a couple of things. When you were playing in the Pro Bowl, did you were you just kind of like out in Hawaii like this is a joke? <laughs> like, yeah. like what are we doing? <laughs> Tell us about your Pro Bowl experience. Yeah, I was drinking. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, oh, we got practice today. Yeah, because there was a story that you missed the practice. I did. Yeah, <laughs> tell us about I that. I did. I, um, I, w- I was having shots with Lil John and, yeah. and you know Chuck Liddell re- wrestling with him. Hold on, um, Chuck Liddell and Lil John. You can't just throw these just having shots with them. Yeah, and just and he was like, I ain't making practice. I, I it wasn't my decision. Yeah. <laughs> 
He was like, look, practice? Yeah. When your AI just kicked in look, at that point, right? If that, if, that sun, if that sun didn't beam through the blinds, I, I'll be, I, I would still be asleep right now. If that sun never, if, if I black out curtains, I would still be sleeping yes. right now from 2005. Um, you, you know, uh, it, it's – you know, I'm, I'm from Prince George's County. Yeah. Right. And we grew up uh, very, you know, low income. We didn't have a whole lot. We were homeless a couple of different times. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I got a chance to bring my family over there. I had a yeah. couple of friends to fly out. So I flew like 10 people out my mom, my aunts, my, my, uh, my co- yeah, we're talking about to Hawaii. Coming from the yeah. East Coast, that's a big deal. That's a, that's a huge yeah. deal. And so, like, we, we didn't have the opportunity to do nothing like that. Yeah. So, let me fly everybody out and enjoy Absolutely. ourselves. And then also, too, I fell into the trap because I ain't never been to Hawaii either. <laughs> you know, so you get you get somewhere, you having a good time, man. It's like your first time. Now I'm like, oh. Yeah. You know. Come huh, on. You know, whatever. Uh, I, I I probably broke a record for my ties order <laughs> in that week, man. I'm not gonna lie to you, but the my tie record has been broken by yeah, Sean. Huh? No, no, for sure. I definitely yeah. hold. They got my picture up somewhere yeah. by one of those restaurants. Because it's definitely Boston. a party. I mean, time for you guys to kind of you guys have been working long on hall season, where you know we've seen the Michael Vicks. They used, we used to do Pro Bowl parties back in the day. Yeah, and we was the, we was the culprits because we were like, right, let's throw the party because we knew all the boys were gonna come. So we have Mike Vick and all them over there. Where how can you not? want to party in paradise, right? Well, I, I think the biggest thing, too, is um, you get a chance to be around a lot of the guys who yeah. who you only who wore helmets you only competed against. Yeah. So I just remember just meeting Peyton. He was the first person I ever asked autographs from. Wow. So Peyton, Peyton my, my rookie year, I asked him for a signature. He actually gave me a signed practice jersey. Wow. And so that was like the first jersey that I've ever yeah. had signed by anybody. Um, but to see like Peyton Manning sitting by the pool, like joking around, yeah. like giving everybody shit, laughing, joking, like having, having a, a beer. I was like, man, damn, Peyton's cool, yeah. man. Like Peyton's like dope. And, you know, it's all these other guys, even some of the ones that you thought you would hate. Yeah. Right. So these ended all, up being cool. Ended up being yeah. super cool, man. Like, you know, some of the guys I've had, you know, some squabbles with during yeah. the games. I thought they were holding a little bit too much. Yeah. We were talking, talking shit back and forth. And you get around them, man. And, you know, they got their families out there, their yeah. wives or, or, you know, whoever they're out there with. Yeah. And you just meet, get a chance to meet their whole family. Yeah, um, it's a different, different atmosphere. It was um, so we, in two thousand. Like the funny Pro Bowl story. So uh, two thousand six, we we're playing the Forty Nineers. Got right? it. Squad, yeah. right? Yeah, playing San Francisco Forty Nineers, and I I hit um, Frank Gore. Okay. I mean, I yeah, I got him good. Yeah, right? <laughs> and Frank is a bulldog. Frank, when you get a, him, you Frank, get him. Frank is a, a whole different beast. And I hit Frank Gore. Hard. Yeah. And so this clip is up or whatever. And I got up, did the lights out dance. Anyway, so we're at the Pro Bowl. And um, I'm walking out the door of the hotel. And somebody grabbed the back of my arm and punched me in the ribs. <laughs> like hard, too. Hard. <laughs> I turned around. I said, what the? And it was somebody in front. I was like, his aunt or his mom. Yeah. Was, punch me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> so I turned around. And I realized it was there. She's like, you better not hit my boy like that again, right? <laughs> and so she didn't, she didn't tell me. Uh, she didn't tell me who it was. Yeah. But his family all had on his jerseys. So I was like, oh, these are Frank. Frank Gore's family. And I'm like, oh, man, Miss Gore, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I'm just, I'm, yeah. I was just doing my job. Yeah. You know, like, That's mama's baby right there. That's it. Look, I'm, I'm glad she ain't double back on me, yeah. you know, because she, her, she hit me in the ribs, man. Um, but, you know, that, and then my, my family, too, they, they went up and, um, you know, they would, they would always tell me, like, man, I, my aunts, because they love yeah. T.O. They said, man, we, we went up, we came and told T.O. We, we were family. And yeah. he took pictures with us, sat down, talked. And I was like, man, that's just, for me, that was, that was really That was cool. worth the trip. Yeah, think, 100%. Because you just being out there where you kind of seeing these people that you kind of grew up watching. Yeah. Now you're in the Pro Bowl with them, and you in Hawaii. So, I mean, I could definitely see where you as a kid and you kind of being a fan where Peyton Manning, come on, you over here seeing what that core is like. Wait, hey, Peyton, let me get an autograph from you one time. Yeah. No, it, it was, you know, it was, uh, and that's the you know, kind of the, the best part yeah. of it because, um, you know, a lot of these guys are on their way out. Yeah. You know, a lot of these guys are on their way yeah. out, so you don't get a whole lot of interaction with yeah. them once they once they get done. Um, and so, you know, it, get, just getting there. And you're the young one, too, down there. Yeah. Like my, my rookie year when I went, you know, I was the youngest. Come youngest on, Sean. I was about down. to say, you was one of the younger rookies out yeah, there. You're yeah, still was, in your prime. Yeah, I was the I was youngest. Yeah. Uh, I was the youngest ever, yeah. I think. Wow. Um, and so, you know, just get out that, that opportunity to – and we take the – you know, we're taking the, uh, the team pictures yeah. and stuff. And me and Ray well, – you know, me and Ray are close. But, yeah. you know, those times you never really forget because you don't have a, a, an encounter like that yeah. ever, really. Yeah. Because it's definitely going to be something that you remember for the rest of your life. And, you know, you will be somebody. We talk about linebackers. And before we get it better, I got to get your top three linebackers of all time. Inside or outside? Inside and outside. You got um, your inside and your outside. Top three on each. Ray Lewis inside, yeah. for sure. 
Um, you know, I'll, I'll go with Ray, uh, Junior Seau. Yeah. You know, he, two or three. Yeah. Um, and then you know maybe you can throw buckets or something like that. Okay. And then maybe. You and know, the outside. Outside LT. Yeah. Uh, you know Lawrence Taylor, uh, Derek Thomas. Yeah. Oof. Rest in peace. And um, man, it's it's uh that that third one is hard, man, because it, it was, they were you know so much separated yeah. from everyone else. Uh, that third one's tough, man. I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's, because now it's even a hybrid position nowadays. Yeah. Now, because now when you have the outside linebackers, you get that it's like a defensive end hybrid, right? Yeah. So you have the likes of Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa, what right. they're doing. Like, what do you think about those boys doing what they're doing now? Like, who do you see in the future that's going to make a big stump on this this immediate? I, I think I think that you know Nick Nick Bosa go down is one of the best yeah. to do it. You know, obviously Joey's really really good. Yeah. Uh, but Nick is I think is another step yeah. ahead of him as far as his capabilities. Got it. Um, you know, I would say that. Uh, you know, Von Miller will go up there. Yeah. Um, you know, guy used to watch like Dirk, uh, Dirk uh, Dwight Freeney yeah, used to watch on, all the Freeney time. Yeah, with the Colts. Yeah, Justin That's Hillman, spin move. Justin Houston, <laughs> Tom Ali. Like yeah. I, used, I used to watch a lot of these guys, even though we played at the same time. Yeah. I still, you know, you you fan of the game. You're a fan so, of the yeah. game, and also I was ultra competitive. Demarcus Ware, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I was ultra competitor where I'm like, all right, cool. They ripped off two sacks. I'm getting three. <laughs> You know For that football player watching this podcast, man, and Sean Merriman was one of their favorite players. What do you? What advice do you have for the younger players? Because you was a young guy coming to the league. Yeah. What advice you got? Especially because you know with the NIL deals going on and a lot of these players getting a little lot too soon. What advice do you have for those kids coming up? You know, it's it's really um, to to take it one step at a time, yeah. one day at a time. Because when you come in now, so much is required yeah. from you. Right. And before you know, you come from college and now and some of them now gotten financial advisors yeah. and different stuff because they got to. They, they're making money now. Yeah. And so, um, you know, just just don't let people pull you in too many different directions. Yeah. You know, set your boundaries. Come on. Because um, I, I didn't. It took me some years to learn that. Yeah. And I'm talking about family, your publicist, your financial, like just set boundaries. Yeah. Because what will happen is, especially when you're young, all this stuff start coming at you, and yeah. then you try to want to do it all. And then it takes you off the main focus, which is the game. Yes. And so. Um, but yeah, a lot of young guys when I talk to them, I just just set boundary with everybody yeah. coming in and say, look, during this time, don't text me. I'm doing this. Yeah, um, I can't do this on these days, but I can do here. So you kind of just come in and set your boundary, stick to them. Yeah, don't let anybody feel you feel make you feel bad, come on. right? Because you know, no is something I had to learn. Yeah, uh, especially with family and people I knew that was Woo. close to. Um, and so yes, it come through, set boundaries, take a day at a time. You you, you should be good. What's the next for the MMA realm for Sean Merriman and his his company? Yeah, August twenty sixth, we're in San Diego. Got it. Um, Going at, back at, at uh, Palma at Casino Palma. Yeah. Uh, all, yeah, we, we start at seven p.m. tonight, and we'll be live on Fubo TV, Fubo Got Sports. It. So if Fubo. you guys don't have Fubo, make sure you get it. This one yes. will be a big card. Um, it, this was cool for me because it was a lot of charity organizations, uh, military organizations yeah. that I work with, and I'm making sure they all got tickets, yeah. and I'm coming That's back dope. to. To do that, uh, we partnered up with a lot of different um, or local organizations, yeah. and you know we'll have about you know twelve to fourteen fights that night, which is you know we'll be pretty stacked up. Yeah. We'll go live on Fubo at seven p.m. August twenty sixth. Come on, go get that Fubo. Not now, but right now. But the social media is at at, at Sean Merriman. Come on, at Lights Out XF. At Lights Out X7. Hey, when you go and watch Sean Merriman's Instagram, he's going to make you work out. He's going to make you feel lazy because I did this morning. <laughs> he already worked out for everybody for the day. But thank you for your time, my brother. Appreciate it. And all the blessings in your future endeavors, brother. Thank you. Sean Merriman, your boy Big Body Cisco, Dos Caras Tequila. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.